uh, in the agenda. Um, you've already heard uh, some overview from both uh, from both John and myself. Um, but uh, let me formally welcome uh, this smaller group of uh, Cicada and in several cases uh, ICANN members. Um, maybe just a few additional things to say about Cicada that, uh, that uh, were not uh, really suitable for the larger group with the, with the consortium. But we, we, we are mainly uh, in the next uh, day and a half going to be focusing on uh, conceptual issues of strategy and uh, 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 understanding uh, uh, various situations in which uh, uh, partners are, are engaged. Um, we'll have uh, some room uh, at some point, I think, a bit of cicada business, um, um, talking about uh, more concretely about some of the ways that we're working. Um, uh, but I think we're, we're running a bit late now, so I'll, I'll, uh, I will postpone that so that we can get uh, we can get shortly to the first of our, uh, our discussion topics. Um, as I mentioned this morning, we we uh, we have uh, some 35 indigenous nations uh, as tend to use the term nation in Canada. We have the Assembly of First Nations at, uh, at the national level in Canada, uh, but indigenous peoples, indigenous organizations, indigenous communities at various levels are, are partners in Cicada. Uh, and uh, um, we have a whole uh, array of age groups, age categories, categories of seniority sort of in the, in the research process uh, from uh, folks like John and I who've been doing this for decades to uh, um, uh, younger colleagues, uh, to graduate students. Um, but I think what unites us in this uh, approach to working is that we're doing an engaged scholarship. Uh, from the perspective of, of multiple disciplines, I, I suppose there are 10 or 12 academic fields and subfields represented in uh, between uh, CICADA and, and ICANN, uh, mostly on the social sciences side, but, but also a significant number in ecological and biological sciences, and some uh, uh, natural resource sciences, some particular applications. Um, and so, one of the ways that we hope to be able to contribute to situations on the ground uh, is, is through sustained uh, research collaborations. And when we think about, uh, about the process of constructing knowledge together, um, I can say that it's, it's been a difficult journey in the Canadian context, you know, where at a certain point in the 1970s, disciplines other than anthropology discovered traditional knowledge or traditional ecological knowledge. And there was a kind of a research paradigm for a while, which was like kind of going out with a large basket and collecting indigenous knowledge or traditional knowledge. But everybody knows that's not how knowledge works. Knowledge is a social process. It's never the way that knowledge has worked in the academy. You know, we, we have our colleagues and we, uh, we go to conferences and we talk with one another and we get ideas and we publish things and we read each other's stuff and, and knowledge accumulates over years and decades, and across generations. So why would it be any different in a, you know, in a collaborative context, in a context of research collaboration with communities, with nations, with peoples, with 
indigenous organizations. Um, so I think what unites the researchers in, in this enterprise is the notion that um, the site of knowledge production uh, has moved uh, to, the, to the communities, community level, to the organizational, to the institutional level, as John was saying earlier, uh, in which all of us are engaged from a variety of, of, of perspectives. And it is a continuous process of, from the very start, understanding what are the goals, understanding what are the hypotheses that inform research, understanding uh, what are the relevant information, data, modeling, analyzing together. And this brings together very different traditions of knowledge production. Uh, it brings together even very different cultural paradigms, different worlds uh, that, we, uh, that we inhabit. Uh, but we have in common the, some sort of conviction that uh, finally we are sharing at least a world or that our worlds are intersecting and that, that uh, conversation between those uh, is, is vital to some sort of collective future, some global, global future. We have problems that we share. Um, and uh, as I think, it, I think the philosophy articulated by the ICCA consortium uh, holds as much for us in Cicada uh, and in ICANN uh, that um, the, the paradigms uh, and, uh, knowledge traditions of, of, of indigenous um, uh, partners in this conversation uh, are in fact healthier, are in fact more beneficial uh, than uh, many of the standard uh, Western knowledge approaches that uh, on which the, the university has traditionally been directed. Uh, so we're going to short, shortly turn to uh, a first conversation about what this um, conversation involves, and, uh, a first kind of uh, set of round tables, and uh, I'll leave that uh, for, uh, I'm not sure who's going to speak to this, but uh, I want to give a huge thanks to, uh, to Sophie, to Justin, and to Caroline, who is not Caroline Siegel, uh, for putting a lot of thought into, uh, into this program, into this agenda, and uh, there's been uh, one or more of them have been, I think, in communication with, with all of you at, at some point. Um, uh, and we hope to have a, a, a nice cross-fertilization between uh, the, the cases that uh, individuals will, will present on behalf of their communities, organizations, and our collective uh, round table sorts of work. And then to have that feed productively into the, uh, um, our comparing of notes and our forging of strategies with the ICCA consortium. So that's all I'm going to say now. Uh, John, do you, would you like to add some words? I want to apologize because I'm jet lagged. <laughs> and I think I just dozed off. <laughs> you know, John is great. John always amazes me, though. I've seen John doze off in seminars, and he comes to and he asks the most appropriate <laughs> questions. <laughs> he, waits, he waits until he's got a green questions. <laughs> All I can say, I, I think, because we've already talked about ICANN, is uh, the hope that we can use this time productively to both reflect on what we're trying to accomplish. We've got a couple more years of this project and uh, have time to talk about different uh, site experiences. Because at the end of the day, uh, it, it's the knowledge that we can share about particular places that, that really, really matters. 
and so that's why this is what we'll accomplish in these, uh, these several days. Uh, most of you know that we're going to go to some ICANN meetings in Nairobi next week and uh, you know, sort of doing, um, having this experience and going there with the, with, uh, the momentum and, and the um, knowledge that you can share with us will be, uh, will be hopeful. We're, we're hoping to uh, straighten out some of the governance issues that we've been, uh, been looking at. Um, and uh, struggling with, and, and that would be very, very helpful. Um, I think we're, I, I have the good fortune of being able to talk to most of the students and reading theses all the time. Corey's right now is my major uh, uh, preoccupation, and uh, talking to people. So I feel like I'm, you know, gaining energy because of the, the information flowing from the various sites. And it's, and it's interesting and it's important uh, what's going on. And I, I, if we can share that and develop a, a common focus, I'll be very pleased. I'm so glad everybody could come. Thank you. So, thank you. Yeah. Um, so I thought that was going to be longer. Sorry. Oh, I mean, we are catching up. We're, we're catching up. Time. Time. We're, we're back on time. Um, <laughs> wait, do you have do you have a program on there so that I can no, pull it, it up there? It was, it was up there. It was up there. Oh yeah, it was up there. So yeah, just yeah, okay. <laughs> so would you like? Uh, I'll move. I can move down. I think that's yeah. So you have to work with the. Screen. It doesn't show. Oh, it doesn't it's, show. It's you. a split screen. Okay. Um, the cursor is now. Uh, okay. Great. So um, I'm going to quickly introduce the program, but at the same time, you all had the copy and already had a bit of a look at it. Um, I'm going to ask Justin to join me because um, what you might not know is that. This is my first time in Africa. I've never worked in Africa before, so um, my focus has been very much on Latin America. So I was uh, very lucky to have Caroline Thiel and um, Justin Raycraft helping me. They're both um, PhD students working for many years in Africa um, to help me put together this program. Because um, it didn't seem right that I would, with literally no experience in Africa, to put together a program for um, a regional conference in Africa. And um, so I'm just going to introduce the first bit, which will be the part that will follow this introductory session which is uh, our interactive session on co-creating knowledge. And I'm going to try and put this in here. Um, luckily, Colin has already given a wonderful introduction about co-creating knowledge and all the challenges that come with that. So I don't think I need to give um, too much of an um, introduction about that. I will, in a minute, once we have finished with the program, um, give you an overview about how we're splitting up groups and the question that we're going to pose for each group. But basically what we're going to do, we're going to discuss some key questions about co-creating knowledge, how, what does it mean, what are the challenges, what are the opportunities, both for communities and for researchers. Um, and we're going to split into groups and then discuss for about 45 minutes and then come back together and present before we then um, go on to case study presentations. Um, Justin, you want to join me now to present the rest of the program? Sure. I'll, if you want me to present it, I'll, go, I'll, I'll scroll down as you speak. All right, so <laughs> which point are we at? So uh, the first theme is right-based approaches to conservation, which is our theme for the rest of the afternoon. Right, so uh, just first off... Actually, I think, you're, I think you should be farther up, shouldn't you? No, we're here, right? We're, we're just here. So right? Well, we're at the... Co you just introduced that. Yeah. Which but is what you introduced, right? Right. right? I just introduced that and I will give a little bit more detail once we finish the introductions. Because oh, it's okay. the, the bit that follows. I know that sounds complicated, but There's it's actually... There's a knowledge co-production first, John. Okay. Everybody's going to split into two groups. Oh, we'll sorry. talk about that for a while. <laughs> Let's start. I'm sorry, I probably I tend to speak way too fast, so that was sorry. my fault, I'm sorry. But everybody knows the video. <laughs> exactly. I will tell you a little bit what you're actually going to do. I know that's a weird announcement to me. <laughs> Give me five minutes. <laughs> Alright, so first off, um, we decided to kind of organize things into themes a little bit just to try and um, pull everything together into a, a coherent conference that was kind of had some, some themes that were not mutually exclusive, certainly overlapping, but they could be organized into separate sessions. So 
The first one um, that will be later today is rights-based approaches to conservation. Uh, we thought that would be an interesting one just because um, land rights in particular seem to sort of undergird a lot of these issues. Um, and it can also be taken in a lot of different directions. There are human rights-based approaches to conservation, there are indigenous rights, um, what those different approaches entail, how they might conflict with each other, um, how you can sort of negotiate those situations where there are competing claims or competing, competing rights claims. Um, so we kind of, we, we organized some presentations and cases um, that seem to fit within that umbrella of rights-based approaches. And, uh, you know, we'll get into those specific cases later on. Yeah. Uh, can I just mention something also? Rights-based approaches to conservation, uh, or RBAs, um, uh, it's also a terminology that's used in IUCN, the ICA Consortium. So we thought that maybe coming from an academic angle, this could be a way for us to build some bridges. Um, but we don't want to necessarily use the RBA language or policy framework in that particular way. We want to use case studies to explore how rights-based approaches are actually being implemented. So yeah. I just wanted to mention that. And also, just along those lines, the fact that it can be interpreted and taken in so many different directions, that it is jargonistic in some ways, um, and that people interpret these terms in a lot of different ways and they're used in different ways, um, is fruitful for discussion, I think. So um, those, are, those are topics that, that may come up naturally um, as, we, as we go. I think that the, there's half an hour for each case, so you know, people will get into the specifics of, of their cases. Also, just as a reminder, the presentation should be between 10 and 12 minutes, and the rest is for questions and discussions. So hopefully that should give us enough thing. Okay, so moving on to tomorrow, the second theme was uh, natural resource <laughs> governance and management. Um, and this seems to be a, a theme that um, comes up in, in pretty much all of the cases everywhere, whether they're um, decentralized, community-based conservation projects, community-led, or whether they're more top-down in nature. There are always very particular sets of institutions and uh, relationships between stakeholders at play, uh, which may lead to conflict or it may um, lead to positive outcomes or more nuanced ones that might be um, positive in some ways and negative in others and you know, how those trade-offs unfold might be, or in a lot of cases is directly linked to uh, governance. So um, we have uh, several talks on, on topics related to that. Um, if you scroll down a little bit, maybe, Sophie. Yep. So, yeah, I mean, in a sense, when we say they're not mutually exclusive, governance and, and management will come up in, probably in all of the talks to some extent, but um, we thought it would be useful to have an actual session dedicated to it. Yeah, you can scroll. It's okay. <laughs> So we've actually got two sessions on governance and management just because there were so many. And the second one is, um, all three of them are basically focused on the Tanzanian uh, context. Um, so we thought it would make sense to group those together. Um, um, but the rest of the cases, they're, they're drawn from, from various geographical locations. And then the third one is reconciliation. So if we kind of take our end goal as, um, whether you want to use the word conservation or not, but having, um, if we follow with the territories of life, but you know, positive studies where, or positive um, outcomes where people are, are happy with their circumstances, wildlife is thriving, biodiversity is, is on the rise. You know, however you want to, to measure it, however you want to measure success, both ecological and social, and how those are embedded within particular political contexts, what would reconciliation look like, um, where we wouldn't have to kind of have tremendous costs associated with um, very particular conservation benefits. So what are some of the pathways through which um, conflicts can be resolved, competing interests can be reconciled, 
whether they're legal frameworks or um, uh, through the through formal institutions of, of the state or um, accountability and governance or um, future directions for policy. There's a number of different themes that fit within that as well. So those are the kind of three overarching um, themes that we've organized things into. And then the, as we move forward, there, there are also going to be two round tables, which hopefully um, they, they'll take their own kind of direction in, a, in an organic sense once people sit down across from each other at a table. Um, but the first one is kind of along the lines of reconciliation as well. Um, thinking about trade-offs um, and that rhetoric that we always hear about win-win conservation. What would that look like? Is there, are there kind of concrete things that we can think about moving forward? Um, so hopefully some of those themes will get explored in that one. <coughs> And then the second one is thinking more specifically about tenure and land rights, um, you know, in the context of uh, people's customary rights to, to land and to access and use resources. Um, how can these sort of relationships between the state and communities and, say, private actors um, be sort of thought about and conceptualized in a way that, that benefits communities and you know, overall conservation goals, um, as opposed to collaborative relations that are still embedded within very particular power dynamics. Did you have a point there, John? Uh, will we have particular people in each round table, or will that be just simply yeah, facilitators will convene the discussion? Sophie, I, I think, think it's we, the full group. The, the idea is to uh, that people choose whichever theme they prefer to discuss because they're parallel discussions. They're, they're, they're separate. Right, a separate discussion. They're, and then we can't bring together to share. Right, so, so that's actually a question we wanted to pose to, to you all because we weren't sure if it's um, a bit too much to then come together and present what happened in each round table or if that's something that you want, um, which we could add because there's actually quite a bit of time we still have left in the afternoon before dinner. So we could reconvene about uh, like quarter to six for maybe half an hour to discuss the results of the round tables or maybe you don't find that necessary. It sort of depends a little bit. We can also see that. Um, yeah, sure. <coughs> um, just an idea, because we're such we're kind of a small group, um, would it be more useful to have the round tables be a collective session um, and somehow manage the time in that kind of way? I think that makes Looking sense, around. yeah. We're, we're all the, this is a round table right now, mm -hmm. so I mean. Well, I mean, we discussed this yesterday and then we decided to go for this. I mean, it's, it, it depends uh, what, what you all want. We can, we can, I'm happy for, for people to, to decide on this. The only trade-off that there, I think there is, if you first have one round table and that goes on for an hour, an hour and a half, and then you have another one afterwards, is that the second one tends to lose a lot of the momentum and the discussion because people are naturally quite tired. Mm -hmm. um, so it, Maybe we can just have a quick vote. Who wants to have two sessions, uh, one after the other? Can I just propose, in a scenario where we would um, separate, choose one or the other, could, could we not make it um, a very small assignment that we come back with like our top five most important points to share so that the, the sharing aspect of it after doesn't have to take enormous time. We're probably pretty tired by then, but mm -hmm. we do get the outcome of it, and it can be for conversation and free time before dinner, like with other people. We mm -hmm. can do that more informally. Sure. So you but can it could be structured so it's quite simple that, okay, take your out of the whole discussion, identify, because that also gives structure to the round table, identify your top you know, five points that you want to communicate to the other group. Mm -hmm. But you would want to go for the separate one, the parallel ones. Is that the general consensus? It's they Let me just to mention, usually a round table has got a number of people who know they're going to come in and speak to a topic. They don't have to speak forever, but they can um, put their ideas on the table. And that generates a certain energy. Um, <laughs> so people might want to think, you know, even today, would they like to participate in this round table or that one? And then that can give us uh, a certain focus of thought. 
uh, we're preparing. I, I, I sort of like doing it all together because I don't think we're such a big group. Mm -hmm. and, and, I, and I was looking at the uh, second round table and the first, I thought, which one would I not want to be part of? You're, you're facilitating. <laughs> 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 you're, 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 you're already been put in my room. 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 I know. I don't even have a choice. Well, I'm, I, I think it's better to do it in one group because mm -hmm. we are not that, that, that many, you know? So, yeah, if, if, and then if we did in 15 or 17, then there's much more um, thinking yeah. and exchange. And, everything. and then we can serve time as we need. Absolutely, yeah. And I think when we first planned this, we had a um, number of 23 people that were going to participate. And then I think maybe it would have made more sense yeah. to separate. But, um, Maybe how we could do this, what, what do we have now? We have an hour and a half for both. <coughs> so we just separated and we have 45 minutes for each. Like two and a half. Mm -hmm. This is, this is well, you know, less than two hours, you know? No. No, no, so we have, what we had planned so far was wow. to finish at quarter to six okay. and to possibly then have an exchange afterwards. So um, maybe we could have 45 minutes per session or would that be too short? I mean, what, what do you have after that at 5.45? We could, that is a whole chunk of time, isn't it, right, until 6 or 7? Right, I mean, in, in theory, we can, you know, prolong sessions until 7.30. The question is if people don't need a little bit of rest before dinner. So, I mean, we can obviously also give two hours each for each discussion, but I think, or, you know, maybe, let's, how about we give one hour per discussion yeah, from yeah. 4.15 four four to 5.15, yeah. and then 5.15 to 6.15. Mm -hmm. yes. That seems reasonable, and then there's still about a bit more than an hour until dinner. Yeah. yeah? Okay, so I'll change that in the program um, in a little bit, and I'll send the new version around. Okay. Um, uh, one comment on the for the facilitators of these roundtables. Um, I was in Sydney, Australia, and we had a sort of roundtable with a like up, like uh, about the same amount of people. And what was really useful and um, unique was uh, the facilitator does everything to make everyone's voice count. And he had a stick, like a, a holding stick, and he would give the stick to somebody, um, and that person would pass the stick to somebody else. And I'm just throwing it out there as an idea, because in these roundtables, sometimes it, there's a tendency for... To everyone talk over each other, you mean? Or yeah. Not? Yeah. Yeah, it could be. I mean, you can find a stick or a coffee yeah. stick. Or it's kind of um, classes facilitated by, by, by North American indigenous leaders where they do circle. And then you actually go around and everybody shares if they feel like. Because I do feel, while we're all saying it's a small group, it's just big enough that we're going to only hear a few voices. Yeah. And, and, and so I think, I think finding some way, whether it be a circle strategy or whether it be the stick strategy, but that we ensure that there's more voices to it. For sure, yeah. Thank you. Any further comments? No? Okay. I mean, maybe you also want to you know, change the titles of the round tables, or you might want to suggest a third one. Feel free you know, to approach, mm -hmm. <laughs> approach us if you feel like that, because you know, we're sort of imposing them. Just um, sticks on the virginity. A carrot. That sounds How good. How about a chocolate bar? Oh, yes. <laughs> right. Um, as you probably know, Friday we have uh, joint activities with the consortium, um, and then we have Saturday we have an excursion, which originally was planned for the entire day. I'm, I'm sure you already know all of this, but. And now what the plan actually is that we come back for lunch, I assume that's still the case, yeah? And so um, we hope that you will still feel energized to spend a few hours in the afternoon with us um, to sort of finalize our Cicada meetings. Um, we thought that we would give a little bit of free time between 2 and 4, or maybe 2 and 3.30, so that you, know, you can enjoy the day and go to the swimming pool and whatever you feel like. Um, but the idea is to come back for another short discussion in the same groups that we have in a minute for another sort of finalizing discussion on knowledge 
co-production, which will focus more on solutions, um, and then some presentations and discussions on knowledge co-production. And then we'll um, have possibly some other Cicada-related discussions as well, that, uh, by the future of Cicada. And yeah, maybe a bit of what the Lens and Bolts of projects and resources and so mm -hmm. on. Right. Um, so that's what we're going to do, hopefully. That's going to keep us maximum three hours. I'm hoping more like two and a half hours. Um, and that will be it. Um, well, in theory, whoever is still around on the Sunday morning, I know that most of you are traveling either on the Saturday evening or Sunday morning. Um, but whoever is still here, and um, will have a smaller meeting to discuss a few sort of questions like fundraising and um, new projects and collaborations. Um, so that's mm -hmm. that. And um, I sent you an email with the presentation. Can you open it? This is like a imaginary stick, but um, we just forgot to mention that on Friday the 9th is the joint activities with the ICA consortium. Mm -hmm. I've just mentioned it. Then. Yeah, okay. I just wanted to remind everyone that that's on our program. So we won't do that. I think that worked, yeah. It's just need to get it centered. Maybe we can make it a little bit bigger. Is that possible? Uh, you can see if, if, if it works. But I had trouble expanding the other document. It didn't. So that might be it. But it's a PowerPoint, so just go to the slideshow. You should be good. Yeah. Where's the Where'd the cursor go? I don't and we had a very successful um, session on this in our um, Latin American meetings um, two weeks ago. And um, I hope that it will be just as productive here, um, possibly not, possibly um, very useful. We also had one very interesting comment that I found in our Latin American um, conference, which was that maybe co-creating knowledge is not the right expression. Maybe there's already enough bias in that and you should maybe talk about the meetings of different types of knowledge, of different types of knowing and, and being and thinking. Um, what we've tried to do is to separate into two groups, um, which you can also change if you like, because you know if you feel you, feel you belong more into one group than the other, that's fine. And the idea is to have two different sets of questions. Um, one is more focused, more geared towards um, researchers that are working with communities. And the other set of questions is more geared towards community leaders and what their experience is working with researchers and academic institutions. Um, so just going back, as you can see, the, oh, oh, no. so the first group, group one, is um, what we hope is representative of community leaders. And I'm not sure about the terminology, but community leaders is, I think, what we uh, agreed on. Or? Yeah, or Community representatives. Community representatives. Um, and then group two is people that uh, are representatives of academic institutions and researchers. Um, so the idea is to go for about 45 minutes and we have another room right next door um, to separate in two groups. One, so group, uh, group one will stay here and group two will, and I'll show you where this uh, will go next door. And we have about 45 minutes to discuss these uh, three different questions. You're free to change the questions. You're free to 
make whatever you can say that's not the question you should be asking um, we should look, be looking at something else it's really up to you to discuss what you think is most important in appropriating knowledge and what needs to change what can be improved what are the challenges what are the opportunities and um, then we'll come back for about half an hour to present the difference uh, from both groups um, and then move on to the case study presentations any questions i can see there's a lot of question marks on the faces Do you have a list? Do you have this printed out that we can carry yes, with us? Yes, we have it actually um, written out because we have no access to a printer just now. So it's a personalized sheet for you. Mm -hmm. Is there any um, further? Feel free to ask if that doesn't. I think we, don't, we want one reporter for each group. Yeah. <coughs> okay. I can be the reporter for the library. Um, yeah. If you, Whoever feels, yeah. Also, we have for so the, the group that stays here, we have only one whiteboard pen. So group one who stays in here will have use of up to the white of the whiteboard. Unfortunately, group two will not. And <laughs> we only have one whiteboard pen. There is a whiteboard, just not no pen for it. And but we have you know a piece of paper and you know anything that hopefully I can try and find you so that you can put something together on paper if you so wish. I have a question. I mean, it's not not to take you back on planning this. I just to understand why you, you talk about producing knowledge. You think it's necessary to divide the groups. <laughs> right. So why? How I decided? How we decided? Why, why to are the groups divided the way they are? What you know, about for production? Why they not co-discussing? <laughs> why? Sorry. Why we? Separate why, why, why separate between indigenous I, and uh, right? That's a very good question. Yeah. University. I think um, I took the same model that we had in Latin America, and maybe it doesn't apply here. And um, what we noticed when we prepared um, this session for Latin America is that we have a lot of people that work together that come to the conference, so a community leader and a researcher, and. Um, Although we might not always notice it, but there is often still a power dynamic, invisible power dynamics between community leaders and researchers, or between what we consider Westerners and non-Westerners. And so that was a way of giving a room for free speech, or I guess, or uninhibited you know, criticism, so to speak. No one feels like they have to be criticizing maybe the researcher they're working with, you know, that might be sitting at the same table. That was the idea, but I'm happy also if everyone feels like reordering the groups, that is also an, you know, something that we could do. Um, no, I think it's okay to go on the way it is. It's just it's conceptually for me, it's, uh, it's already, already you are buying into the idea that there are two separate groups. Right. Like, using knowledge differently and discuss the ideas differently. Mm -hmm. And yet, the underlying premise of these questions is that, the, that you can say to yourself that maybe co production is interacting, so they mm -hmm. should be a closer. That we should be thinking together, talking together, not, exactly. not, not in different spaces, and then coming together in any way. Just yeah, and I think, but I think, it's okay I think you're absolutely right. And, and I probably didn't, that's, that's actually my mistake. I didn't explain enough about the session that we have on Saturday, am I right? Saturday afternoon. And um, because what we plan there is to have, again, group discussion, but very shortly, about what Cicada can do to improve whatever has been identified as issues and problems um, on, on creating knowledge. And then we have actually an entire hour to discuss all of this in a group together. Um, so I hope that that would give enough time to, to discuss in the group. I have a time, time question. Yeah. Um, because it's 3.30 and so right now we should be in the coffee break and then, and then coming back together. How do, you, how do you want us to do it so that, because otherwise we're eating into the presentations? That people have prepared. That's right? We have point. to start at 420. So mm -hmm. I wonder if there's an adjustment that needs to be made for how long we separate. Right, for. because we started right 45 minutes later. That's true. Um, oh, <laughs> how do I get the program back into the program? Oh, can I? Yeah. So thank you for reminding me because yes, I forgot about the coffee break and we all need coffee. So it's 39. Is that? Yeah. So now, now it's your coffee break. Right. But then that only gives 20 minutes for the. But uh, you don't have to take a coffee break for half an hour, but uh, or maybe even no coffee break. I just right, worry for the presenters mm -hmm. that you're eating into the, their time. Yeah. If we so take too long in this session. I think um, I already had cut down sort of the, the group discussion to 45 minutes, but maybe we can cut down a little bit more. Um, and then we have an extra half an hour at the end, 
but I think we might push, we have might, might push and cut down the presentation to 25 minutes. Um, I'll try and reorder that and see, see how that works. But if we come back at, if we really start the group discussions at 4, and we come back together at 4.45 for some short presentation, and we really keep it to like 5 to 10 minutes per group maximum, and then we go straight into, um, straight into the presentation, and we should be able to finish later by dinner time. Which is a bit unfortunate, but as you know, the morning session took longer, so we started the afternoon session a little bit later.